uh, everyone, we are here with indie filmmaker Michael Patrick Rogers, and uh, he has a new he has a new film coming out uh, that he's working on right now called "I Went Out to the Forest and Punched a Tree." I think that's one of my new favorite titles for the year. <laughs> um, and uh, Michael, how are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, um, everybody keeps telling me you need to change the title, no. and then I explain to them. It will be explained at one point in the movie. Yeah, don't change it Um, (laughs) because it's awesome. (laughs) Um, So can you tell us a little bit about the project? So this is a art house horror movie, but it's way more drama than horror. The end is pretty messed up and very horror. But uh, basically, it's about this this kind of heavy metal guy, and uh, he starts hearing this guitar riff that he's not sure where it's coming from. And eventually, he he figures out, or he believes, that it's coming from the drive-through speaker of an abandoned restaurant. And he starts to hear voices through the speaker, so he orders food. And when he orders food, he thinks they get his order wrong. So he decides it would be best to call 911. And the dispatcher ends up falling in love with him on the phone. So she goes there in person instead of sending the cops. And she insists that he bring her home to meet his mom, who he hates. And then we go from there. Pretty normal. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many restaurants I've ordered from that were closed. I mean, it happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that sounds that sounds very uh Lynchian. It sounds very uh Donnie Darko. It sounds very, you know, it sounds it sounds kind of like it borders on the drama horror, like kind of straddles like yeah. you were both of them. Um so in the in the Indiegogo, I I uh, describe that basically this will be my my eraser head because David Lynch definitely was a big influence on me. Um, coming out of high school, I used to make instrumental noise music, mm-hmm. and then when the first time I saw uh, eraser head, I was like, whoa, this people actually use or people other people actually know what kind of music or noise this is because David Lynch the Eraserhead soundtrack is nothing but noise pretty much right and that so he instantly became uh, one of my favorites it, you know but also when I first saw Eraserhead it was as if somebody was speaking a language that I didn't think anybody else knew <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying it was like, oh my God, they make movies like this. Well, the baby, just the baby alone, like got me, like yeah. hooked on him. So oh. let's see. By the t- I saw the first time I saw that was in ninety five or ninety six. So I guess so. He'd already had Twin Peaks. I'm not sure which which movie of his was it out. It feels like then. it was about the wild at heart time. I don't know. I mean, somebody's going to yell at me uh, for being wrong, but it, it happens all the time. <laughs> uh, and I couldn't I couldn't run out and stream Twin Peaks at the time because that didn't exist. Yeah, then. that wasn't a thing. Yeah. That wasn't even the they weren't even on DVD yet, much less Blu-ray. Um, yeah. so yeah, so you're writing and directing this project. Yeah, I'm trying to shoot in the fall. Uh, right now we have an Indiegogo going that just started and it's going to run for 60 days. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, when did it start and when are you finishing? Just started last Thursday and okay. it'll go for 60 days. Um, hopefully I hit the goal. So so we can use the uh, in-demand feature that Indiegogo has. Mm-hmm. What is your goal? 
Um, on the Indiegogo, just 35 grand. 35 grand? Okay. Yeah, but that won't be our main source of budget. There'll be investors. Excellent. But um, Excellent. I very much, when I explain to people that I'm bringing on, I explain to them that it'll very much be a uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez um, 14 days and for seven grand type of situation <laughs> as far yeah. as like like shooting shoot and shoot editing on the spot and you know going yeah. on you know um so so i love the vibe uh i was looking at the press kit and i'm sure there's uh there's information on the indiegogo page but uh yeah, the, the whole ahead. pitch deck pretty much most of the pitch deck is actually in the in the story of the indiegogo excellent yeah and there's references to actually some of my favorite films like Eraserhead. Um, and uh, Lords of Chaos and just these very moody, dark uh, things. Uh, who, I mean, obviously Lynch, but what are your, your main influences on this this project and where are you hoping to take it? Um, everything I write. So I'm, a, I'm actually a professional comic book writer and I make indie games. And mm -hmm. um, I definitely go by the write what you know philosophy 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 <laughs> unfortunately uh unfortunately it's it usually steers into the into the darker lonelier type of stories so this one it's not specifically just based like i never base anything specifically on one experience it's all a um a mashup pretty much of various experiences. And I assume a lot of it is symbolism, metaphor, things like that. Um yeah, yeah. That you kinda pull. You know. Yeah, so um, one of my um one of my influences that you would never think of like from seeing my, my projects is a guy named Todd Salons. Oh, you know yes. that is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Welcome to the dollhouse. Oh my God, palindromes so, messed me up, and I loved it. Yeah, so welcome to the dollhouse has a lot of my style of like dark humor, where it's like your audience laughs, but they think they're like they question themselves for laughing at something that's so cruel or sad. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of that kind of stuff in my uh, projects. Yeah. And uh, happiness is also just this, just a, a full movie of complete, yeah. like, cringe, you know? And you, yeah, don't, you, you don't know if you should be laughing, you know, but... Mm. I wish that movie was on digital. I don't know why it's not. To this day, like everything should be on digital. Yeah. But uh, somebody stole my DVD copy like in the early 2000s and I never got it back. <laughs> of happiness? Yeah. Somebody stole your happiness. So maybe I should order one. Yeah, somebody <laughs> stole my happiness. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's like around 2004, I think. Yeah, that, that movie is pitch black and just absolutely wonderful so you're kind of leaning into the todd solon's david lynch that's some that's some dark territory yeah and another big influence that really doesn't seem like it would fit because a lot of my stuff is very low dialogue is uh kevin smith i think more so just like the way he got started and the way he's continue to do everything basically the way he wants is is what is uh influential about him to me yeah he has he has really crackling dialogue along the uh lines of quentin tarantino that just kind of it just it tickles your ear you gotta hear it you know so yeah um, i actually so i used to do, i used to do a lot of extra work and uh, photo double and stand in sometimes. And um, 
So I got to be an extra in Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Oh, nice. And before they started the project, I had a I had a beard. I had long hair. So they interviewed me to be his Silent Bob stand-in in the movie. And uh, I think it was I think it might have been the first AD that that I was sitting down interviewing with. But I was like, yeah. Um, I explained to him like what Kevin Smith's movies meant to me, and I and I said, I was like. Most people won't agree with me, but I think he's a master of dialogue. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah, he's really good at dialogue. He's very yeah. good. Um, but I won't forgive him for yoga hosers. I just won't. Um, so uh, it, the, thing, the thing that I'm picking up is, you know, you're an indie filmmaker, uh, indie creator. You've done games. Um, and you are creating a film. What I love about this is that, is this your first film? This will be my first feature. I've done a bunch of shorts. Okay. But what I love basically about I this... said, yeah, basically I said to myself, if I'm going to be putting in that much effort, time, trying to find money just to do a short, it's, I've done enough of those. It's time to go ahead and do like this, this script. I wrote it specifically for the the main actor, and I, it, I was like, it deserves to be a feature. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you put as much passion into a feature or a short uh, and work, yeah. so let's do it. Um, but what I love about this is how steeped you are in film knowledge and film and and passion for film, uh, especially the things that you like. So I know that this project is going to be something that is driven by just a love for the medium, wouldn't you think? Yeah, and I tell everybody it's it's basically a throwback to movies like like River's Edge, mm -hmm. um, movies from the early '90s, late '80s. Do it for me a lot more than than current. Movies. things that you had to rent on vhs yeah yeah <laughs> and that you had to beg going to blockbuster to get <laughs> going to blockbuster on friday night in high school if, if you weren't seen at blockbuster with a girl renting a movie then you weren't cool yeah definitely i was i was always the nerd that was um prowling the single panel of independent VHS tapes, you know, and like asking them to get something I saw on the internet, the burgeoning internet. So, you yeah. Know. Well, I was usually getting Sega Genesis games. Oh, cool. What did you play? Uh, I mean, we didn't have that much to choose from back <laughs> then. So it was like, uh, uh, Streets on the Genesis, Streets of Rage, uh, Altered Beast, just whatever, whatever was out, really. I was always and playing Super Nintendo stuff. Yeah. yeah, we had yeah. a lot better, uh, more choices on Super Nintendo. Yeah. So you also created a video game. It's on Steam right now. What's it called? I have two two games oh. that I made that are on Steam. Um, they're, they're pretty old now. I released the first one in 2014 and the second one in 2015. The okay. first one's called The Lady and the second one's called The Grandfather. And they're both very surreal, horror-ish, puzzle type of games. Excellent. Would you call them like mist type games or? No, no, no. They're, uh, they're 2D made made with all uh, hand-drawn uh, gotcha. comic book style art. Gotcha. So the artist... The artist on those two games is a uh, he's a comic book art, like full time comic book artist. His name's Stanislav Yakimov. He's in Russia, in uh, Moscow. That's an awesome. And name. I've worked with him on several things, but well, most people know him as uh, Saint Yak. Okay. Like he's done. He did. You know the uh, the recent um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Last Ronin, he did some alternate covers for that. He's done a lot of stuff. Okay. Very cool. So now you are 
pushing to get funding for I went out to the forest and punched a tree. And yeah. it sounds like it's in the vein of pretty much everything you've created, the shorts, the games, um, very Lynchian. So what would you say to people that are considering investing? Um, I would say finding money to make your projects is the hardest part of being a creative and we appreciate every penny. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, we will definitely be supporting you, helping you, um, by pushing this interview and, uh, linking it in the description to your, your Indiegogo. But um, yeah, is there is there anything else that you'd want to share with other indie creators uh, that maybe has kept you going or any any advice? Um, my DP said this the other day, you're never too old and I'm getting old. Like I always feel like oh, the older I'm getting, I'm running out of time, but I guess uh some words of wisdom is you're never too old to get it done basically yeah definitely i mean anthony hopkins really didn't uh land on the scene until big until silence of the lambs or just before that so and you know yeah. look at that he was pretty old then i would assume <laughs> yeah he definitely was and then yeah. he got an oscar for what 20 minutes of screen time so um so yeah there you go well Best of luck, Michael, on uh, your new project. Uh, the, the Indiegogo ends, what, in 45 days? Ish? Oh, no, we still got we still got over 50 days left. Okay. So, you got there's, it. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's several perks that give you a chance to be in the movie as far as um, we have a 911 call scene where there's a couple of perks to have your, like you'll do a call with me actually on the phone that'll be in the movie. There's some for uh, your picture in, inside of the Bannon restaurant as a uh, former employee of the month. <laughs> and there's a, there's a few, yeah, there's a few perks. I think I put four slots to actually come be uh, a neighbor in the movie with like a couple lines. Nice. For one day. That is awesome. Well, everyone, definitely check the description, get to the Indiegogo, and Michael Patrick Rogers, best of luck on this project, and uh, hope to be talking to you again after you've gotten way over your goal. Uh, perfect. <laughs> Me too. All, All right, right, man. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Have a good Great. day.